this is the title. Uh, as I go along with my presentation, I will make clear what's my harmonic uh, contiguous region. What does it mean? Before I start my talk, I would like to take this opportunity to thank uh, the organizer. Uh, in particular, I would like to thank Alexi. Uh, uh, this author conferences have been going for a long time. You know, I like the sustainability of the conferences and the highly organized. Uh, the, these conferences and workshops are highly uh, organized. Uh, also, I'm glad to be here at, uh, in uh, the Institute of Mathematics who hosted this workshop. And more importantly, I am so happy to be here in Armenia for a couple of reasons. First reason, I have a number of friends who are Armenians, uh, in particular the secretary of uh, our university, the chancellor, is Armenian, and I work closely with her. And always she said, oh, please, Suhail, go to a conference in Armenia. So finally, I made it. And another reason, uh, after I finished my bachelor degree, my first job was a high school teacher in an Armenian school. So I'm very happy to be here. OK, so let's start uh, my talk. Uh, this is very similar to my talk uh, uh, last August in, uh, in Rostov author conference, also in Georgia, I was last year, similar, and also in Canada, similar talk. Uh, the reason I like to uh, uh, have my talk in fluid dynamics, this is basically fluid dynamics, for a number of reasons. First of all, uh, fluid dynamics is a very broad area of, uh, uh, of uh, research, very, very broad area. Second thing, I think uh, this type of uh, talks is very accessible to a general audience. And third, it's also accessible to graduate students, you know. Okay? And for, <laughs> and the fourth thing is kind of weird. Whenever I, I give a talk in fluid dynamics, always one or two persons from the audience give me some new ideas to do research on, you know. And I can show you two ideas that the audience recommended me to, to work on them, and this resulted in a number of papers. You know. All right, so, uh, okay, let's consider the basic equations of fluid dynamics, basically the Navier-Stokes equations, Navier -Stokes equations uh, which are, uh, are derived from the conservation laws of mass, momentum, and energy, okay? Uh, these are the equation, Navier-Stokes equation, for viscous, incompressible, incompressible homogeneous flow. Uh, Rho is constant, the density. Here are, if you want to take a look at P, pressure, rho density, and so on. So these are the equations. You know, lots of, uh, lots of researchers work on Navier-Stokes equations. Uh, the difficulty of these equations is, are, is that they are highly nonlinear. You know? And so finding exact solutions is almost impossible. You know? So there is uh, lots of numerical work on this one. Lots, lots, too much. You know? Numerical fluid dynamics is a very broad area. Uh, of work. Now, today my approach will not be numerical. Although with a number of colleagues in the past, I have some numerical work on, on the in fluid dynamics, on the Navier-Stokes equations. My approach will be different, you know. Okay, it's, it's kind of exact solution in, in some sense. But not for this one. I'm going to try to simplify this equation. All right, let's see the simplification. Uh, this equation, I'm going to Convert it to dimensionless, dimensionless variables. You know. Okay, let's see. Okay, so let L be characteristic length, capital U characteristic velocity. With this change of variable, you see here. Of course, if you have characteristic length, characteristic velocity, uh, this will result in characteristic timing. So this simple change of variable, you it, it will convert the equation in the first uh, page to this one. Uh, this is dimensionless parameter. Okay, by the way, you might say, you know, you know, engineers might say, what's L, you know, what's U in practice, you know. For example, if you have a flow of, around a sphere, uh, you can say uh, characteristic velocity is velocity at infinity. Okay, as for the length, you can say the diameter or radius of a sphere, you know. So you need to make sense uh, in applications. What do they these mean? Anyway, these are the equations. This is the Navier-Stokes equation. I'm going to put more restriction. I'm going to assume steady flow. Steady flow, so the derivative with respect to t, this will disappear, you know, steady flow. Now here, you see this here? 
I don't know if you're familiar with fluid dynamics. This is the recipro reciprocal of the so-called Reynolds number, you know. Very famous Reynolds number. Uh, okay, so uh, for steady flow, this will be zero, this term, zero. I'm going to, this is one over R, so I'm going to multiply by R both sides. Let's see what will happen. Okay. Yeah, so, the, uh, yeah, for steady flow, sorry, you know, I, for steady flow, the, this term with T disappeared, so I have this equation. So this one, as I told you, this term is the reciprocal of re the Reynolds number. Here is the re Reynolds number. Look at it. It's fluid density, speed, size over viscosity. Okay, we're interested in, in small Reynolds number. Small means what? The numerator is small, so speed is uh, very low size, small size, or the denominator is very big in order for R to be small, so highly viscous fluid, okay? So I'm going to discuss this when R is very small, okay? All right, so for R small, okay. So my, uh, the, uh, the other equation, if you reorder it, if you multiply by, it was one over R, the side multiply by R, both sides, you get this one. Okay, you see this one for small R, this term will disappear, you know. Uh, of, of course, this is a controversial thing to say because this could be very big, you know, right? Actually, this is called a singular perturbation problem, you know. So it's controversial. It's, it's easy to say that for R small, this will become zero, but uh, it's not as easy as this. Okay, but anyway, for small R, this term will disappear. So we get this. The equation will reduce to this one. Okay, uh, yeah, just to go back here, wh wh when I said that it's singular perturbation, you know, if you go back, okay, sorry. So this one here, uh, you know, in perturbation, this is R very small, we call it epsilon usually. So if you go to per per perturbation theory, this is a regular uh, perturbation because the epsilon is not in front of the highest order term, but this one, you see, this is singular perturbation. So you cannot say, uh, knock this term out, you know. <laughs> it needs some work, you know, okay? Okay, let's uh, consider two-dimensional flow, okay? Uh, two-dimensional, so let you, uh, uh, let's define the stream function this way, Psi. Del Psi over del Y is U, del Psi over del X minus is V. So if you go back, oops. Going back is, yeah. Okay, you see, this will be satisfied automatically. Uh, this means like uh, uh, derivative of u x y is the same as u y x. So this one is satisfied automatically. Okay, when you have uh, this stream function, and uh, and uh, the you know if you go back to the equation, sorry, I'm going back and forth, you know. So we can eliminate the pressure here. The pressure can be eliminated, you know, I don't want to show you details. It can be eliminated, so we end up with this equation. This, the biharmonic equation. Okay, so what's the biharmonic equation? Models what? It models for small Reynolds number, because we assume R is very small. So it means the flow of a highly viscous fluid, which, or, which moves very slowly. Okay, that's why uh, sometimes you call it slow viscous flow. Some people call it creeping flow. Creeping means slow flow. Okay, or the famous term which is Stokes flow. Stokes flow means flow of a fluid which is highly viscous and moves very slowly. Okay, now, so here is the, the model, you know, it's the biharmonic equation. Okay, let's take, okay, uh, some application, a flow in ducts. There are many applications for this flow about immersed bodies, in elasticity, elasticity it arises, the biharmonic equation. Okay, but I like the most two things about <laughs> the application. I like this one, pulmonary alveolar blood flow. You know, for people, unfortunately, like myself, I have high cholesterol and triglyceride also. <laughs> so sometimes, you know, if you have block, blockage here, the flow of blood is very slow. So it's governed by the biharmonic equation. Lately, I was surprised, this is lately, you know, I saw a paper 
played shapes such as the violin or the stadium, football stadium, you know. Football stadium, it's not circular, you know. It's, it's, it's like by harmonic, more by harmonic. So I was surprised to learn this one as well. As well. So played shapes such as the violin or the football stadium can be obtained by only numerically solving the by harmonic equation. All right. Oh, okay, there are many textbooks on Stokes flow. I'll give you the classical ones. This is a very big textbook, Happel and Brenner. You see the name of the book, Laura Reynolds number, you know, because R is small, you know. Or they can call it hydrodynamics. There is Langlois and Deville, slow viscous flow. This is 2014. Uh, also a very nice book to read in, on fluid dynamics, mathematical theory of fluid dynamics. So lots of applications. Okay. Now we're going to try to solve, you know, the biharmonic equation. Uh, on simple region, is no big deal, you know. We can do it by separation of variables. Okay? Eigenfunction expansion. You, know. uh, you can do it in rectangular coordinates. You can do it in uh, polar coordinates, spherical coordinates, toroidal coordinates. You can separate it easily. But the problem when you do separation of variables, you have a series and you have coefficients. So how can you find these coefficients? It's a problem. So I told you my approach is not numerical. You know. Okay. So let's take this one. This one, actually, the first problem was like this we worked on. You have a well here with fluid here, okay, rectangular. And you have a plate moving here. Plate, uh, belt, belt, I'm sorry, belt moving. And when the belt moves, the fluid will move inside, right? Experimentally, they showed the motion of this. Okay, so this is the first problem was done here. But uh, this one, when you do separation, when the biharmonic for the rectangular coordinates is uh, the coefficients are constant coefficients, so it's easy you know, to handle. Polar is very difficult. It's not very difficult, more difficult, because you have non-constant coefficients you know, for this. But, but uh, why the idea? You want to see, uh, I want to show you an approach to solve the biharmonic equation given the boundary conditions. So this was solved first, but I want to show you the, the sectorial cavity. There is fluid here inside. Fluid, the belt moves, so the fluid will move. So how will the fluid move? Let's see how it will move. Okay. So this is the, of course, it's a sectorial cavity, so the biharmonic is in polar coordinates, right? Uh, very easy to solve. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, to you know, when you solve uh, when you need when you have partial PDE, you need to supplement it with boundary conditions, right? To satisfy physical needs. Physical needs like uh, like the flow of fluid, like the no slip conditions, like the velocity near the uh, near the wall is zero. You know the tangential velocity. So you need, you need to satisfy physical needs and mathematical needs. Mathematical needs means the problem has to be well posed. You know? So we have to take care of, of both these. You know? Okay, if you want this condition, this means the the speed of the belt is one. Just we normalize the thing. Okay. So we complemented this by harmonic equation in polar with boundary condition to satisfy physical need and mathematical needs. Okay. Here is the separation of variables in red. You, know. you get sines, cosines with a function of r. This is the function of r. Yeah. The problem, how do you find the coefficients here? So this is the idea uh, is related to We've seen today the Fourier series expansion. This is related in a way. You know. Okay, let's see how to find the coefficients. Okay, now, all right, so, so we have, uh, be, uh, please notice that this is from minus infinity to infinity. So you have E n and you have from the negative side E minus n. You know. So in a way we have four co coefficients. You know. All right, so th this, by, se by separation of variables, we solve the, the biharmonic equation. Now we have these conditions, you know, boundary conditions. So it resulted in this, so in this series, after applying the boundary conditions. So how can we solve them? Okay, we convert them to vector form. Uh, okay, wait. Yeah, we convert them to vector form. Okay. 
Now, what is the idea we're going to use to find the coefficients? It's a generalization of Fourier series expansion, the coefficients. You know, in Fourier series, the sine, cosine are orthogonal. You know, sine nx times cosine mx is zero. Uh, so here are the coefficients, right, in uh, uh, Fourier series expansion. Now, we're going to generalize this idea, okay, to find the coefficients. So this is called orthogonality condition, right, in Fourier series. So here, so these four equations, I coupled them, we coupled them, this one. The first two coupled them, the last two coupled them in vector form. Sorry? Oh, so so let, let me just go back. Yeah, just go back. Here are the four equations. We coupled these two and these two. Okay. And we get this vector form. Okay, how do you find the coefficients? We have this by orthogonality condition for in vector form. This is about delta function for m different than n. Uh, it is zero, you know. So like we do the Fourier series expansion, this is more general, you know. The problem for, uh, okay, but by the way, we derive this by orthogonality condition in general, but it's not easy to get this by orthogonality condition, okay? Uh, we work later on generalizing this by orthogonality condition. So we have the orthogonality, by orthogonality. We try to generalize it to wholly orthogonal, but it's very difficult. You know. But uh, the professor I visited in Canada, he's in Fourier series. He said, I think we had sine cosine is like uh, the basis for Fourier series, uh, orthonormal set. We can generalize it in general, make a general orthonormal set. and I, he said he will be able to, to generalize it to poly orthogonal functions. It's the same. That's why always, you know, today I saw the Fourier series expansion in two talks, right? It's nice to have this by orthogonality in, for vectors, you know, for. Anyway, so to find the coefficient, just we apply this one, like we do in Fourier series. But, but deriving this one is very difficult, this by orthogonality condition. Okay, so apply it, you get a system. Okay, so now this is Stokes flow in a rectangle, right? And I show you one in a sector. So every time you need to derive the orthogonality is not convenient, like once in rectangular coordinates, once in polar, once in cylindrical, once in toroidal. So we try to generalize the orthogonality. You know, when, when we do biharmonic, it's fourth order. So when you separate, you get a fourth order differential equation here in adjoint form. Uh, some restrictions on the coefficients. But this one is uh, general for any uh, known coordinates, rectangular, polar, and so on. It, it will take this form when you separate the variables. For this one, we were able to derive this by orthogonality condition, this one. And it's published in Siam Journal of Applied Mathematics. Okay, so for any uh, after you separate variables, if you have, if you get the fourth order like this, then you can have a biosolubility condition. Okay. So here is the, here is the flow. Uh, we had to ask someone in experimental flow dynamics and it agrees with experiments, this one. The experiment shows, this is the flow. This is how the fluid flow. Uh, this is the beauty of applied math. You do something abstract, then it agrees with experimental results. Uh, actually, I, I, I don't know much fluid dynamics uh, except mathematical side, not the application side. So some engineers told me, check here, check on the corners, what will happen. So we checked and we have this, they, call, they said it's called corner edges. So it means uh, the flow in the corner here not for this case, in the corner, the fluid does not mix with the rest of the, does not mix with the rest, it stays in the corner for the rest of its life, you know, it moves just in the corner. They call it corner edges. So this stays forever here. And this is the other corner. So the fluid does not mix with the, with the rest of the fluid, it stays in the corner. Okay, now the title of my talk was 
by harmonic, you, know, you should see the by harmonic equation. Then I use the, the word contiguous region, right? Contiguous. What's contiguous region? Contiguous region is a region consisted of simple regions, like this one. This is, this is contiguous, the flow in the, uh, this is around the bend, flow around the bend. Why the bend is contiguous? It's a rectangle and a sector, you know. You see, sector, this is rectangle, this is sectorial. This is contiguous region. Okay, so so how do we do it in contiguous region? Okay, so by harmonic equation in uh, rectangular coordinates, by harmonic equation in um, polar coordinates, and we match them on the interface. Okay, it's called matching method. We match them. What do you match? The stream function, C1 with C2, first derivative, second derivative, third derivative. We, we match, it's C3. Why we match uh, function, first derivative, second, third? Third derivative has to do with pressure. Second with acceleration, first with velocity, as you all know, that's why. So physically it makes sense. You know. So pressure is third derivative. So, so basically this is contiguous region consisting of a, of a rectangle and a sector, and you match them along here, and how, when you match them, you use the biothorganality condition to find the coefficients. Okay, so here the biharmonic in, in uh, polar, and this is the biharmonic C1 in rectangular, and you match what? The stream function. Oh, this should be C2, sorry. C1 with C2. C1 here. Match it with C2. Sorry, this is C2. Okay, match the first derivative. Has to do with the velocity, acceleration, and pressure. You know. Okay, you put them in the vector form because we need to use the bioorthogonality condition and uh, we solve the problem. Okay, if you want to see the results on, uh, on Maple, uh, you know, you have to check that uh, the biorthogonality matched, right? So look, C1, C2, uh, uh, look at the matching, for example, 0 0.37, 0 0.37. So just, we need to check whether it is really matched. Look at the first derivative, 0 0.18, 0 0.17. Not good, I didn't take too many terms, you know, of the series, you know. Okay, 0 0.16, 0 0.16, it's really good. So you have to check that the, all the C match with C2, first derivative, second derivative, and third. Uh, so here is the second derivative, 0 0.55, 0 0.56, second, third derivative, 2.25, 2.24, really. So it means, it works, the method. Okay. This problem uh, with a friend in the USA, University of Houston, uh, we solved uh, this one in numerically a while ago. Then we moved to this one. In numerically, it was a problem because of the corner. You know. Corner, the method was unstable. You know. So I'm trying to do it with a, you know, do it. I started with a student, but she left. I'm trying to do this one, see what will happen to the corner. You know, numerically it's, it's not, does not work properly. You know. The numerical method would be unstable only here near the corner. You know. By the way, <laughs> some, some tell me who cares about this one? You know, this is a flow in a constriction. Actually, I was in Georgia last year and I was looking at the river. It was this way, wide, and suddenly it narrows, you know, so. <laughs> I saw one application in front of me, you know. so it makes sense. Okay, these are some papers long time ago of of the of the bioorthogonality conditions, you know. And I think the last uh, slide, as you will know, is to thank you. Thank you so much.